Hi everyone, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and Health, I guess, because this video is about my health. It is about how I accomplished lowering my blood pressure very significantly in about three, four weeks time. And everything I do on my channel that is with regard to health from now on, I really look for experts and good solid studies, good solid research to back what I'm doing. Because in the past, I looked at some good looking influencers and got taken down a different path that maybe I wouldn't have taken had I really studied the research. And one of the researchers that I totally respect is Dr. Michael Greger. He wrote three best-selling books, How Not to Die, how not to diet and also how not to age. And one of the things I like best about Dr. Greger's books is that he has like over 10,000 references, references to studies in each of those books and they are all fact checked. And one other thing, which I really appreciate, he has no special interest involved. And amazingly enough, he has not taken one penny of profits from those three New York Times bestsellers, which I think is really amazing. Now, before I get into this video, I do want to say to please don't take anything I say as medical advice. I am not a doctor. If anything, I would like you to use my information as a springboard to do your own research and or to use what I'm doing in my own personal health journey to motivate you on yours. And for those of you who follow my channel, you know that last summer I had a stroke and I won't go into the details again, but I did get past that. And as a result of the stroke, I did change from a carnivore, high saturated fat diet to a more whole foods, plant-based diet, and also started doing lots of research on various aspects and ways that I could use to improve my own health. And one of the things I've discovered is that monitoring your blood pressure is so very important because high blood pressure is the number one risk factor for death all around the world. In fact, the American Heart Association says that more than 78 million Americans suffer from hypertension and more than 50% of those are over 60, which is my age range as well. And I have a question for you. Do you know your blood pressure? Do you keep up with it? And my guess is that you probably don't. And the reason I am guessing that is because prior to my major health event last summer, I really didn't monitor my blood pressure either. You know, we had a blood pressure, actually a wrist cuff, which turned out to not be a very consistent way to measure your blood pressure. I now have the arm cuff, which is much better. But I, like many of you, would go to the doctor every six months or a year, and the nurse would take my blood pressure, and usually it would be up in the 130s, which would concern me a bit, but then I would think, oh no, that's that white coat hypertension. That's because I'm here in the doctor's office, so I'm a little bit nervous. So we would both just let it go, me and the nurse, and even the doctor would say, oh, that's just what it is. You're probably lower in real life. After having the stroke though and doing some research on heart disease, I realized that after age 60, it is very important for us to keep tabs on some basic numbers in our health life, one of them being blood pressure. And this is the blood pressure monitor that Alan and I use. It is very highly rated on Amazon. It's the bearer. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it is a wonderful unit, very simple to use. It is only $29. And if you don't have a blood pressure monitor, I would recommend that you look into getting one. And I would recommend that you get a cuff style like this one. And Alan and I just keep this in our family room basket, in the magazine basket by the couch. And then in the morning when we're having our smoothie and sitting under the hair helmet, which we do every morning, both of us will take our blood pressure and I, I write it down on my cell phone. Although this unit will store the information, which is pretty neat. Now here is a look at my blood pressure around the time of the stroke. It's 131 over 80. And here's my blood pressure after a month on the plant-based diet and it's 115 over 72. It does vary by a few points every day, but it stays right around there in the teens or perhaps early 20s. My 115 over 72 was totally within the normal range. And you may wonder what I did to bring my blood pressure back into the normal range. Well, first I switched from the high saturated fat carnivore diet to a whole foods plant-based diet. Even just adding fruits and vegetables to the diets of hypertensives can lower the systolic blood pressure, the top number, by seven points. I mean, that's the kind of blood pressure improvement you might get losing you know, 10 pounds. And I also started reducing my salt intake. According to the American Heart Association, as you can see there with the blue arrow, the average American gets 3,400 milligrams of sodium per day, but their recently revised recommendations say we should each get no more than 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. The green arrow there shows where we get most of our sodium. 
70% comes from processed and restaurant foods, 11% comes from added table salt, and 14% occurs naturally. And here are six tips to help reduce our salt intake. The first is to read labels. The second is to choose no salt added canned goods. The third is to look for low sodium or no salt added sauces and condiments. The fourth is to buy fresh fruits and vegetables. The fifth is to choose frozen foods over canned. And the sixth says explore your spice rack. And that means basically just instead of automatically reaching for that salt shaker, to investigate using other herbs and spices. And I lowered my salt intake by reducing or eliminating processed foods and fast foods and also reading labels. And here is an example of that. I use this Pacific Foods Organic Vegetable Broth and it says low sodium, but always look in the nutrition facts on the back to make sure they're not lying to you basically. And it says here that every serving has 120 milligrams of sodium. And according to the American Heart Association, we should look for foods, processed foods, that contain less than 150 milligrams per serving. Here's an example of some canned corn and it does say organic super sweet corn with no salt added and the sodium content on this is just 10 milligrams. And to stay within the heart healthy guidelines, we should strive to get less than 1500 milligrams of sodium per day. And to help me do that, I completely switched away from good old Morton table salt. I now use this salt substitute called new salt and this is potassium chloride, not sodium chloride. And this has no negative effects on your blood pressure at all. And I will say this is so good. We use this as our table salt now. Alan uses it on his air popped popcorn almost every night. I use it on my edamame bean snack. Absolutely love this. The only problem with this may be cooking with it. I haven't quite figured that out yet because I've used a teaspoon of salt like this in a soup and I don't think it made much of a difference in terms of the taste. But in terms of a table salt, this one is fabulous. And this one is available on Amazon. I think it's three little guys like this for $9.99, which is just wonderful. And the important thing to remember is no matter how we reduce our sodium consumption, it's important to do that because less salt is much better for us. There is a consensus the dietary sodium plays a significant role in raising people's blood pressure. So there's this unequivocal evidence that increased sodium intake is associated with increased blood pressure. And we know that increased blood pressure leads to increased risk of vascular diseases like strokes and aneurysms and atherosclerosis. So, to quote the longtime editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Cardiology, we all must decrease our salt intake! Exclamation point. When countries have tried cutting down on salt, it seems to have worked. Campaigns in England were able to successfully bring down salt consumption, blood pressures dropped, and so did rates of heart disease and stroke. And in addition to going more plant-based, Dr. Greger said there are also some other lifestyle-related changes that can really affect our blood pressure. One of them is reducing your drinking. Alcohol restriction can drop your systolic blood pressure five points. Losing 10 pounds can drop you seven, as can just eating the recommended eight to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Regular aerobic exercise for at least three months can drop you nine. So let's add that onto the chart. Combine the fruits and vegetables with meat reduction, you can drop it 11. Blood pressure medications can have side effects, but on their own can drop pressures by 15 points. Now, each of those things are scientifically proven in studies to reduce blood pressure, but one of the best things we can do is to simply switch from a meat-heavy diet to a more plant-based one. Put people on a purely plant-based diet, even one you know, moderate in sodium, and you can drop hypertensives by 18 points, even after 9 out of 10 reduce their blood pressure medications or stop them entirely, all within just seven days. Now, I have to admit, I was truly amazed at how fast it worked. Basically, I switched to the plant-based diet, and within three to four weeks, my blood pressure had gone down 15 to 18 points, which was just amazing. And I will say that I also stepped up my cardio from little to none that I used to do to now I'm doing between 20 and 30 minutes on the elliptical, and I have to say that it makes me feel good, and I think that is having positive effects on my blood pressure. And if you have tips and techniques you would like to share on either reducing your blood pressure or anything you've done to improve your health, I hope you'll share your information in the comment section below the video because that way we can help each other.
Okay, at this point in the video, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And this one specifically pertains to Dr. Greger's information. And that is that the whole idea is progress, not perfection. You don't have to be like me and do a 180 between the carnivore diet and the plant-based diet and totally change everything. As indicated in much of the information that Dr. Greger shared, anything you can do along the health continuum will really improve your health. For instance, even if you don't want to go entirely plant-based, just add some more fruits and vegetables into your diet. And I have to say that one of the easiest things you can do is to switch out your table salt for a salt substitute that will lower your blood pressure and you probably won't even notice the difference. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.